as everybody in this room is very well aware, not everyone that will be hearing this teaching online will be, um, this coming Thursday in another two days, in our country, we will be celebrating Thanksgiving. I love that holiday. I love the idea of that holiday. I love that our, as a nation, we have set aside a day each year to thank God for what he's done for us, to thank God for all the things in our lives that we have to be thankful for. And I was thinking with this particular Thanksgiving, as people are cele celebrating it around the country, that some may look back on this year and perhaps feel like they don't have as much to be thankful for as other years because it's been a tough year for a lot of people. But then I think about the first Thanksgiving, the first that we look back at and we recognize and, and we acknowledge to be sort of the pattern for what we've done since then that was done by the pilgrims um, in Plymouth. Do you know, I think everybody knows that it was a tough year for them. Mm -hmm. 102 passengers arrived on the Mayflower in, in Plymouth. Only 51 of them survived that first year. Mm -hmm. Exactly half of them died. So, you know, what, are, what kind of, <laughs> what kind of uh, you know, death rate is that one? And if anybody does stop and feel like, oh, I don't have that much to be thankful for, then look at the example they set because what they were thankful for was they lived. They didn't focus on the ones that, that died. They didn't focus on the hardship that they had experienced. Instead, they focused on how thankful they were that they had survived. And they, that God had blessed them. That God had given them abundance. That God had sustained them. And they went on. We always have so much to be thankful for regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of how hard a year it may have been. We have so much to be thankful for when you look at God's Word and when you look at what He's done for us and what He's given us. It's a right thing to be thankful. It's a right thing to be filled with thanksgiving. On Thursday, we will be filled with thanksgiving, we'll be full of thanksgiving, we'll be full on thanksgiving. Um, it's a good thing to be both, uh, good to be filled with thanksgiving, but not filled to overflowing on thanksgiving. <laughs> I've had that happen in my house. But I'd like you to take your Bibles and go to Leviticus chapter 7. No, go to Leviticus 22, I'll tell you about chapter 7. Being thankful is something that God has always wanted his people to be. And in the Old Testament, in the Mosaic Law, God instructed his people to actually offer up sacrifices of thanksgiving. The <clears throat> sacrifices of thanksgiving were peace offerings. There were different kinds of offerings. Um, there were sin offerings, trespass offerings, there were peace offerings. And the sacrifice of thanksgiving was that type. In Leviticus, I'll just, in chapter 7, it talks about it. It talks about offering for thanksgiving, unleavened cakes, leavened bread, and that these were with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. And in Leviticus 22, it says, And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. The sin offerings, the trespass offerings, were 
required. Those were ones that they had to do at a certain time. Those were ones that were something that was required um, for them to do. But the peace offerings, the thanks, offerings of thanksgiving, they're instructed to do them, but to do it out of, from their own will. To do it out of the heart that is thankful. Because when you're doing something because you have to, well, then it's not necessarily in heart, the right heart behind it. Mm. And thankfulness is an attitude of heart. It is an attitude of heart. We take a day where we stop and recognize what God's done for us and we, you know, think about these things, but we're thankful every day. And thankfulness is not just something that we actually stop and say, God, I thank you for this and I thank you for that. But it's an attitude that we go throughout our lives with just being so thankful for all that God's done. That we recognize God's hand in our lives. That we recognize that he is the source of all life. That he is our protector, our provider, the one that watches over us, the one who has given us life eternal, the one that did everything that he accomplished for us through Jesus Christ. We have so much to be thankful for, and we live life with that heart of thankfulness. I found in the last several days that my heart has just been so filled with thankfulness. And such a feeling of contentment that goes with that. A contentment not in the sense of settling, not that kind of contentment, but a contentment where I stop and just enjoy what I have and how rich I am. How rich I am because of the people in my lives, because of you all, because of the privilege to know God and to be able to share his word, to teach it. The privilege to be a part of this family. What a wonderful life God has given me. And how thankful I am for it. You can turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Throughout the Old Testament. They remembered that it was God who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. God had told them to remember when, he get, when they got there, to remember that it was him, that they didn't do it on their own. And they continued throughout, whenever great things happened, to have days where they gave thanks to God. Under King David, in Chronicles, we'll read about such a day. The day was the day that they had brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. The Ark of the Covenant that represented the presence of God. And it had been taken away by, you know, invaders. And they got it and they brought it back after it had been gone for a long time. And in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 1, it says, So they brought the Ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of fish and a flagon of wine. We're going to have a little bit more on Thursday than that. Uh, <laughs> But they, I'm sure, enjoyed and were blessed by what he gave them. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record and to do what? Thank and praise, thank the, Lord. And praise the Lord God of Israel. To thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Those two, thankfulness and praise, are found in close proximity time and time again throughout the word of God. Mm -hmm. To praise, to recognize what God's done, and to express it. And thankfulness is, in many places, it's the same word. It's just translated in some places praise, and some places thankfulness. And sometimes it's two separate words, but the concept is you know, very closely related. Hmm. Verse 7. 
Then on that day, David first delivered this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen. I skipped to verse 23, if you're wondering. His marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. And let men say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice in all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and praise to thy glory, to thy praise, and glory to thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. Hmm. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Hmm. He gives that psalm at that day, and you know you may recognize a lot of that psalm from Psalms. And the psalms are so filled with praise and thankfulness to God. They're so filled with them, and David had such a great heart for God, such a great heart of thankfulness. You can look at Psalm 107. We'll just read a little bit of it. Verse 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And then it goes on. Look, look at verse 31. O oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. You can turn to Philippians chapter 4. You could read, if you, re if you read through Psalms, you would find just psalm after psalm after psalm that expresses these same truths. These truths of how thankful we should be to God how worthy God is to be praised, how much he's done for us. For Israel, they looked at the things that he had done in terms of bringing them out of, out of the captivity, the way that he had took care of them when they were out in the wilderness. They looked at the way that he had protected them from their enemies and how he had fought for them time and time again. But what he did for Israel doesn't compare with what he's done for us. What he's done for us is so much greater. What he has already done for us. He gave us eternal life. He didn't do that for all of Israel. It wasn't a gift. He gave to us our sonship rights of righteousness and sanctification, redemption, wisdom, all of these great sonship rights. 
He's given an inheritance to us, an inheritance that we can look forward to, an inheritance that much of which we already enjoy. He's placed us in this wonderful family where we have one another, brothers and sisters, to love and to be strengthened and encouraged and edified by. You could go on and on and on, and all you have to do is read through the church epistles to see how God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, everything that he had to give in the heavenly places in Christ. Mm -hmm. To stop and to recognize that, not just to recognize those things like, I thank you, God, for my family, and I thank you for my job, and I thank you, God, for my health, and all of those are wonderful things to be thankful for. But the greatest things are those eternal things that he has done for us. Not just the things that we see, but those things that are not seen. Those things that can never be taken from us. Those things that have been guaranteed. Those are things worth stopping and recognizing, just like the psalmist recognized what God had already done for them in bringing them to the land. In Philippians chapter 4, the epistles are, are filled with verses that also talk about being thankful, and we're not going to look at a lot of those. I just want to go to two places in the church epistles where it does talk about thankfulness. And the first is in Philippians chapter 4. In verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord when... Always. Always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always. That's an attitude. It's an attitude of recognizing it's that deep joy within, but it's also expressed in that attitude. That attitude of having a joyful heart. Of being thankful. Of recognizing what God has done. Look at verse 6. Be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. No matter what you might deal with in life, no matter what hardship you might ever encounter, it says to be anxious for nothing, but instead, by prayer and specific request, go to God. Go to God. And to do it with thanksgiving. To make those requests known with thanksgiving. You know, <clears throat> nowhere have I ever found, when it talks about going to God in prayer, to go there with pleading. To go there and ask God with even, you know, saying please. It's always with thanksgiving, with thankfulness. Because we have that confidence that he is answering our prayers. That he has already done these things for us and we go to God with thanksgiving to just claim what is ours. We thank him because we know that he is hearing our prayers and causing those things to happen. And then verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes the all understanding, shall keep or guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we go to God expecting that he's going to answer those prayers, when we go there with thankfulness, then that peace is ours. Then we don't worry. We're not filled with anxiousness. And then verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, do what? Think on these things. Think on these things. If there be any things, whatever, whatsoever things that are true, because there are so many things in this world that aren't. 
There are so many things that are not true. There's so many lies of the, of the adversary that people believe. But it doesn't tell us to stew on that, does it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell us to think on those things that are not true, but instead choose to think on the things that are true. There are so many things that are not honest. There are so many lies out there, are so, many, so much deception, so much, you know, somebody trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And you can get so upset about that, and you can get so, it can just rob all the peace and joy from your life. But God says not to think on that, but instead the things that are honest. There are so many things that are unjust. You know, I hate uh, injustice, and, and, you know, you don't have to look far for it. And you can stew about that, and you can get all upset about how unjust this is or how unjust that was. And perhaps some things that have happened to you have not been just. But God says, don't think about that. Instead, think on the things that are just. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that are impure. There are so many things that are around us that are, you know, anything but pure. But again, God says, think on the things that are. The things that are lovely, the <laughs> things that are of good report. Lots of bad news that we're confronted with all the time. But we're not to think about that, but the things that are good news. It's very hard, very hard to be filled with thanksgiving when you're thinking about all the things that are unjust. Mm. It's very hard to be filled with thanksgiving when you're thinking about all the things that are lies. When you're thinking about all the things that are the opposite of these things. When you're thinking about all the bad news and all the things that people want to worry about. When you think about that stuff, it's pretty hard to be thankful. That stuff may be out there. But that's not what we think about. Just like the pilgrims didn't think about that day, how they all of their loss, but rather how God had seen them through. David, on the day that he celebrated the bringing back the Ark of the Covenant, he didn't think about how terrible it was that it had been gone so long and that the people had so strayed away from God that this could happen. Instead, he rejoiced in that day that again they had it. Well, we'll keep going. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, verse 15 and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be what? Thankful. Thankful. Again, you see the connection between the peace of God and being thankful. We saw that in Philippians. And that when we weren't peaceful, the antidote to that, the way to fix that, was to go to God in prayer with thanksgiving. And then we let that peace of God rule. It rules. It rules. You know, <clears throat> you can choose to do that. You can choose to let the peace rule, or you can choose to let your worries rule. You can choose to let the confusion and the turmoil that's around you rule, or you can choose to let the peace rule. It's you doing it. You have to let it. You have to let peace have the reign. That you decide with everything else that I may be confronted with, it's peace that I choose to have the authority over everything else. And then when you do that, then it's not hard to be thankful. Then you can be thankful. You can be thankful for all that God has done, and you can be thankful for the God who is always able, always willing to supply all of our need and to cause us to be more than conquerors in every situation. 
verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let that word dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom, meaning it's not just head knowledge, but it's applied. It's applied. That word dwelling you, you richly to the end that you have it living in your life. And you let it dwell in Psalms. Psalms meaning the writings of God's word, not just the book of Psalms, but the writings of God's word. And hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord that we just have a new song in our hearts. And then, verse 17. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do, in word or deed, in the words that we speak, speak them, with thankfulness in your hearts. The actions that we do, do them with thankfulness in your hearts. It's a wonderful thing to be thankful and to have a heart of thanksgiving, to have an attitude of thanksgiving, it just keeps a joy in your life. It keeps a joy that just floods your life. So this year, as you stop and, and enjoy the day, and each and every day as you go through your day, let your heart recognize all of those wonderful things. Live in those, dwell on those, instead of the things that you could perhaps choose to think about instead. And enjoy that peace of God that comes with that thankful heart. God bless you.